Welcome everybody here on HowlRound to uh, the Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY in Midtown Manhattan in New York City. It's uh, 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 almost dark out here. It's uh, uh, 4.30 p.m. and um, we have a special um, session today. As our listeners know, uh, since uh, March, we are having Siegel Talks where we talk about theater and performance in the time of Corona since March, uh, five days a week, now three days a week, where we listen to artists, what they have to say, how they're experiencing this moment, what meaning they create, and what is changing for them in that world that has already uh, changed. Um, it is as a replacement for programs we do at the Siegel Center, and for many years we have been a part of a very significant project, and it is called the Italian American Playwrights Project. And it is the third edition for the third time. Uh, um, we are hosting um, an uh, evening celebrating uh, Italian playwrights, Italian theater, Italian contemporary theater here in New York, uh, uh, playwrights who really have made a contribution to Italian writing, European playwriting, and also created work that resonates in some way um, with us here in New York. As we often say, artists are in the moment, they can feel experience, sees things we don't see, write about it, put it in a form, but often also anticipate the future. So they make us comfortable and they play with us and our ideas and they create a forum, a stage, a, a space where we can discuss things, see things from different angles, understand better a point of view of someone. So it's kind of a, a sportive competition of ideas. The great playwright, Michael Frayn, who was once at the Siegel said, if you write a great play, everybody is right. Whatever someone says, they have reasons to and you believe them, but then still at the end, you know, there has to be a solution, something that at the moment makes most sense, it's right, and it has follows a law that perhaps even is above the law that humans have made, like the great Antigone a play, so many have referred to, the great uh, Galileo by Brecht and many others. And what we have now with us are four writers who also observe the world we live in, the universe, Italy, Europe, the world, and they tell a story which artists have done over centuries, over thousands of years. And they wrote a story. This is one of many, many stories they wrote. And it became a play, a work that became noted, notable in Italy. People liked it. And among many others, and it was nominated by quite a significant um, Italian um, advisory board. We had a uh, 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 as always at the center, we have advisories. Italy people say, these are plays that might be of interest for you guys in America, New York. And then we have an American advisory board that looks at it and says, this might be really good. This might be too complex. People might not understand who's Aldo Moro, something like this. So maybe that will work so much. So it is quite um, a significant um, um, project uh, in Italy. We had uh, Valeria Giabattoni from the Teatro della Sardegna, who was here, uh, Franco Di Polito, if I say that right, from Teatro Stabile in Toscana, Magdalena Giovanelli, and uh, from the University in Milan, Giulia Guerra. She's the managing director of the uh, Teatro Erbi, Erberi, Erberia, and uh, Graziano Graziani, who has been often at the Siegel Center, who's a theater critic and works for Rai. Um, Sergio Lagato, a theater critic, a dramaturg, a journalist, uh, and then the great uh, Teatro delle Alde, Armana Montanari, and Marco Martinelli, and uh, Anna uh, Ashton um, Pavaziani, the literary agent, a famous one, no. important one, yes, why not uh, have her with us, and uh, the wonderful actress Isabella Ragonesi, who also once came to New York. So everybody took time to suggest plays. And so what we are listening to, and the people we are seeing, we are. Uh, uh, encountering today are playwrights who have been suggested, and we had 15 suggestions, four plays that were selected by a board of the U.S. Advisory Board, and it was uh, Akiba Abaka, who is at Arts Emerson in New York, Patricia Chera, who is at the International Voices Project in Chicago, Soraya Brokurum from the uh, 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 Living Theater, and uh, he's an actress and a director, Marvin Carlson, the great theater historian from the City University at the Grad Center, the wonderful and great, and Catania, who's the dramaturg at Lincoln Center Theater, which is more or less the national theater of the United States. I think in some way, uh, Thomas uh, Simpson, who is with us here, who was uh, so the translator, we felt, why not hearing also from a translator, what's his 
his uh, ideas and uh, even so of course he will fight for all the 15 plays he this time translated the excerpts um, but to hear from him um, Andy Lerner Andy who was with us here uh, also gave us her uh, her thoughts uh, Daniel Lezovitz uh, from the Italian study program at Muhlenberg College and has supported this program also hosted Italian uh, uh, playwrights at their wonderful new program that they are creating at Muhlenberg. Helen Shaw, a significant theater critic here in New York at New York Magazine. Formerly, she was at Time Out New York and also at Vulture. And uh, Dennis Yeyu from the Al Limite Theater Collective. And um, so this is quite a significant uh, uh, a group of people. And those four ended up uh, with us with a road place that Italians thought this is significant. And then they were selected to say they, what they have to say somehow resonates also with us here in the US. And the names are um, significant ones. So let me just uh, welcome uh, Mimosa uh, Campironi. Mimosa, thank Hi. you for joining Hi, us. Thank you. She was <laughs> family game. Uh, we have Mariano Damaco, Mariano, who did good. Salve. Yeah, salve, good. This is what you say in, in Rome. We have Gabriele Di Luca. And, uh, uh, and Gabriele wrote Metropolitan Miracles and Tatiana Motta and she wrote White Night and they were chosen by the 12 members of the advisory board. Really, really welcome. It is the third edition of the program, All Plays Get a Reading in New York. Where we actually also print a, theater, a book with the plays. They get fully translated for the selection. We had part of them translated. And so it's a very significant uh, uh, event and it is. So congratulations for all of you who um, this time it got selected. We all know how it works with prizes. We cannot have everyone. It's also a selection of a variety of stories. So all the entries just to be nominated is a very big deal by these uh, 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 very significant panel from Italy. So um, still congratulations uh, to, to, to all of you who are now with us. And I would like to ask Valeria, for all the people who might not know what is the Italian Playwright Project about, give us a little insight. What was your idea when you uh, created it and where are we at the moment with it? So our idea, because you are part of it, uh, uh, is uh, was um, to give uh, a voice uh, to the Italian uh, uh, contemporary playwriting uh, in a systematic way. So what uh, we registered in six years ago, five years ago, was uh, that uh, many plays were translated and also Tom uh, knows because uh, he is one of the most active translator from uh, uh, Italian to English uh, uh, in uh, playwritings. But uh, uh, there is not uh, a system, uh, uh, there is not uh, an habit to do that. So many, uh, many plays are missed. So it's just a, 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 a singular um, decision to translate uh, the plays. And of course, uh, uh, with no reason to translate, uh, there is also no reason to do that. So <laughs> nobody does. And, um, this was uh, our conversation and was uh, five years ago when I was just arrived here, uh, six years ago when I was just arrived here. And, uh, uh, and one question was uh, how to do that uh, without uh, the money that arrived from the institution because uh, you need a lot of money. So the Seagull Center gets uh, every, every year many nations, many uh, countries, uh, but uh, every country give his own uh, contribute to help uh, uh, dramaturgy and uh, playwritings. Uh, most and, of the time, yes, at least. Yeah, most of the time, not, not always, but so the question was uh, how to do, how to help uh, our uh, um, dramaturgy without uh, any funds, any, any any money in the in the in in the cash, you know. So um, it was uh, the, the the first thought, and it was uh, the the moment when I started to say, okay, let's think uh, something that uh, will uh, grow up if uh, we grow up, and uh, and it was uh, like this. So we started with the. Uh, uh, 
the first edition without an, an advisory board, for example. We started uh, uh, just uh, connecting each other, helping uh, each other. Then we met uh, the first four play, uh, playwrights and then uh, the Italian Culture Institute arrived. So they, uh, with uh, the, the Giorgio Mastraten was uh, the director in that moment. And uh, he, he was very, very interested and uh, uh, decided to, to help uh, the project. And then we won uh, uh, the first grant and then we won the second grant and then we won a prize. So now, uh, of course I am proud of it because uh, this is uh, a, a, a little castle that uh, we built uh, piece by piece. And uh, after uh, the three books, uh, um, now we have eight uh, translations, uh, mm -hmm. many friends around, uh, uh, new connections with, uh, from, from uh, New York, we arrived uh, in Chicago and then we arrived uh, in Muhlenberg College and then we arrived in London. And then little by little, uh, people from uh, all, um, all over the world, there is a, a, a English, uh, uh, um, English speaking people is uh, interested uh, to read yeah. the, the place. Today, for example, uh, I had an order for, for the book from uh, the um, uh, University of Michigan. <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the no, book. really, it's a successful program. No, it is uh, program. something that grow up uh, very, very. Uh, so the yeah. meaning is, uh, of course, uh, to leave something good for uh, the moment we are living in mm. Italy, first of all, and then in the world to spread world. with our own uh, forces. Yeah, so um, it is important, you know, most Americans know Pirandello, they know Dario Fo and often think nothing really of significance happened. Meanwhile, there is a renaissance of playwriting in Italy and it's the Siegel Center where we do many international exchanges with advisory boards with Japan, Romania, Germany, France, Mexico, Caribbean. So we also have the Italian project, but actually it is a very, very good one. I'm very proud of um, what we did. So um, we also have with us, Thomas, of course, the translator will, will come to you, but now let's go to our playwrights in Italy. First of all, Bonasera, I think I have to say good evening. Where are you guys at the moment and how are you? Mimosa, how are you? Where are you? I am in Rome with my two cats and my boyfriend here in the second, during the second lockdown. <laughs> you are in lockdown at the moment again in Rome, right? Yes, we are in the yellow zone here in Italy, so we can go out um, until uh, six o'clock in the evening and then everything is closed. Um, so are you able to write anything? Uh, are you working? Yes, uh, during the first lockdown, better. Now I feel a little depressed. <laughs> it's so hard. It's, I even yeah. I have a hard time even reading. How can one even even write? So maybe we see one of your cats uh, in the uh, in the sessions, uh, or maybe both of them. Please do show them when you. Yeah, do, do, you, do you want to see them? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, Hello. Maybe, maybe. Maybe later. <laughs> Black cat, yeah. maybe. Mariano, where are you now? You said Salva. That's that's what you say in Rome. Yeah. Io sono a Mondaino, è un piccolo paese di mille abitanti eh, in Romagna, nel centro Italia, vicino alla costa di Rimini. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean, uh, Mondaino. Uh, a little uh, town of a, a thousand souls uh, in uh, Romagna, on the Adri near the Adriatic coast. Good. That's a, a Dario Fo country, right, where he came from, and close to Ravenna, and uh, all of it, if I'm right. E, e il paese di Dario Fo, cioè la zona di Dario Fo, sì o no? Sì, anche di Tonino Guerra, Guerra. E di, di, e, sì, sì, di Fellini e la Romagna, sì. Okay, it's it's Fellini uh, country and also Tomino Guerra, the great uh, screenwriter. Yeah, who we love so much, and I wish I had met him uh, 
uh, one day. What what a great tradition! Um, yeah, we, we we have in Italy of writing, you know, since since thousands of years. So the great Dante, but also for Pasolini and others. So it's a strong strong heritage, and you are all representatives of this. And uh, uh, Gabriele. Um, are you listening to us? Oh, look who's there. Uh, tell us, where are you and uh, what time is it? We forget to ask. Il microfono, Gabriele. Can you hear us, Gabriele? I, I spent the microfono, Gabriele. Ecco. Okay. Scusate. Yeah, it's good. Where are you and what time is it? Allora, sono le 11. Eh, sì, le 11 di sera sono nelle Marche a casa della mia famiglia. It's mia 11 famiglia... at night, I'm in Le Marche at my family's house. Sono le Marche qua dalla mia famiglia. Eh, sto lavorando, sto scrivendo da qui perché io abito a Varese, però la Lombardia in questo momento è, è un territorio faticoso per, per il Covid-19. I, I actually live in Varese, but that's in Lombardy, which is a very heavily, strongly locked down zone of Italy right now. Quindi sono qui con la mia fidanzata che avete visto, uh, Olli, il Cocker Spaniel. Uh -huh. I'm here with my fiancé, the Cocker Spaniel, Ollie. Very good, very good. <laughs> e scrivo. Not a lot of fights then. Um, are you writing? Are you able to write? Are you producing? Gabriele, riesci a scrivere bene in questo periodo? Sì, sì, um, non proprio, non sto proprio scrivendo un testo drammaturgico, però è uno di quei momenti della vita dove sto lavorando molto con la compagnia, la progettazione del futuro, ma sto anche prendendo appunti, raccogliendo suggestioni, leggendo tanto. Non sto scrivendo in modo strutturale, ma sto scrivendo. I, I'm not writing a, a specific script, but I'm collecting a lot of information. I'm working with my company, so it's a very fertile period. Yeah, how is it uh, uh, for you, uh, Mariano? Are you uh, are you able to work to focus? In, in questo strano anno eh, ho comunque composto una drammaturgia perché nelle settimane estive eh, dove è stato possibile fare teatro in Italia eh, siamo riusciti a mantenere il piano con la mia compagnia di fare un nuovo spettacolo. Eh, quindi in qualche Let's modo durante... Thomas? Yeah, yes, I've managed to... I was uh, writing a play this summer because I was working with my company uh, during the pause between the first lockdown and the second lockdown. Yes. Mariano? Sì, e, e, e poi in, eh, ad esempio domani eh, andiamo a Roma eh, perché eh, tra le cose che non avremmo mai immaginato di vivere con il lavoro teatrale in quest'anno, domani per esempio andiamo in un festival, si chiama Teatri di Vetro, un festival di teatro contemporaneo e eh, faremo spettacolo con soltanto delle telecamere che riprendono l'evento e lo mandano online. Eh, non me lo sarei mai immaginato di fare un'esperienza un del genere. Uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, we're doing something I never would have imagined having an experience such as this. We're going to Rome and we're going to film one of our uh, performances uh, completely virtual. Incredible, yeah. I, you wouldn't have imagined before, yes. And, uh, and so, um, Tatiana, where are you? I guess also Italy, but where? <laughs> yes, I'm uh, in Milan, in Lombardy. And um, I'm unfortunately, I don't have any pet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I live with my boyfriend and uh, we are- That's good enough, our... that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that's fine. And yeah. How are you experienced this moment, this second lockdown and all of it? Well, um, as Mimosa said, I find, I find this second lockdown more depressing than the first one. I don't know, maybe the first one was such a new uh, situation. We were living uh, this um, weird and strange moment and now it's, it, I find it harder. And uh, I'm, I'm writing a play right now, but I find very difficult to, to focus and to, to write in this moment. Uh, in the first lockdown, it was impossible to me <laughs> to write. Um, but now we went through a 
kind of a soft lockdown. So the situation was better, uh, but not enough, because I think to, to write, you need to leave at the same time. So, <laughs> and we're not actually leaving. <laughs> so. So when you heard about uh, the New York uh, uh, event, the readings, I think you have to be nominated. I think you cannot apply for the complex for that uh, Italian uh, playwrights project. Well, so, and then you got to now selected. Well, can you tell us a bit? Is that is that meaningful to you guys? Uh, what does it what does it mean to be uh, to be uh, to have some kind of a New York representative? Is this another planet far away, or do you see some connections to to your work? Anyone? Um, um, no, eh, è, una connessione, è una connessione sicuramente molto bella, eh, che da tanto in qualche modo che aspettavo, anche se alcuni dei miei testi sono già andati all'estero, proprio per quello che penso siano le caratteristiche della mia scrittura, cioè la, la, la sua volontà di, di creare mondi molto universali, quindi penso che per per sua natura la mia poetica abbia una visione molto internazionale. Okay. E... Let's, let's translate. A well, I just, um, yes, for him it's a very meaningful connection. It's very nice. Well, uh, other of his plays have been produced uh, in, in other countries outside Italy. And he always um, has an intention that his plays should have a universal reach, an international reach. Eccomi. Uh, scusa, um, ho sempre ama amato naturalmente eh, la mia scrittura anche molto ispirata al cinema, alla serialità, sia nella sua struttura, sia nel suo ritmo che nel suo linguaggio. Eh, il mio teatro è un teatro sicuramente molto contaminato e che, eh, che dal cinema e dalla serialità ha mutuato molti elementi. Uh, quindi ho molta affinità con anche la scrittura che si pratica in America. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my work has always been very inspired by cinema in its structure, in its rhythms, in its language, and in particular, um, I've been very influenced by American cinema. Mm -hmm. Mimosa, how is it, was it for you? For me, it was a, it's a big surprise because I feel that we, we are in the same condition now. Uh, the artists all over the world are in the same condition and there's a big prob a big question about art and technology. And my um, testo, the mio testo, uh, it's about this. And I, I want to, volevo affrontare questo problema e rendere la tecnologia uno strumento della drammaturgia per provare a vedere cosa poteva accadere. E quindi mi sono sentita accolta ed è stato molto bello e molto emozionante. Okay, well, um, uh, Mimosa began by saying she's always been very interested in the issue of art and technology. And then in her continuing remarks, she talked about this is what her play in particular uh, is dedicated to this theme of the interaction of basically life and technology and uh, what this is going to mean for the future. Mm -hmm. So it was a very emotional yeah, response. That's wonderful to know. And I want to add uh, that Mimosa wrote this um, this play during the first lockdown. Oh, so that's true. It's a Corona play, also though. It's yeah, I was afraid ah. about my my job. I, I thought that maybe <laughs> theater, magari i teatri chiuderanno tutta la vita e dovremmo trovare una soluzione che non è il cinema, ma è il teatro fatto in un altro modo. E quindi ho provato a immaginare cosa succede se la tecnologia diventa un elemento drammaturgico importante. Well, I thought about what if technology becomes an important dramaturgical element. That's what my play focuses on. Yeah, yeah. And it's incredible that a play written in lockdown gets into a competition, is translated part of it and ends up. So it's in wonderful how fast that works. Normally it's years uh, till, till, till light signals uh, uh, come. Um, uh, Mariano, um, how, how, is, how is that for you to, be, to have been part of this project or being selected? Sono felice, eh, onorato e grato eh, del coinvolgimento in questo progetto. Eh, 
Per me significa anche la possibilità di scoprire se una mia drammaturgia, se il mio modo di costruire una visione, il mio modo di utilizzare i riferimenti classici o del presente, in qualche modo è stato il modo per scoprire se potevano parlare anche, a, come dire, tradotti in un'altra lingua e portati in un'altra cultura, in realtà. So I'm very happy, honored, and grateful. And for me, it was a chance to figure out whether or not my way of rendering theater, my way of thinking, my way of the reality I show on stage is able to be expressive also uh, if for another country, in another language, and in another culture. Mm. Yeah, Tatiana, tell us a bit. Yes, I am also honored and grateful and it's a very meaningful opportunity to me and uh, soprattutto devo dire <laughs> è molto particolare per me essere in questo progetto con questo testo in questo momento perché questo testo al centro ha il tema del viaggio e mi colpisce molto che sia arrivato a New York in un momento come questo in cui appunto non possiamo viaggiare e non possiamo incontrarci fisicamente. E... Um, well, um, I, uh, uh, my play is about travel and so I'm very interested in the way that the, my, my play is traveling. Um, my play is about travel and then it ends up being presented and uh, read at a time when travel is prohibited. Yeah. Mi sta capitando in questo periodo che le persone che stanno leggendo questo testo in questi ultimi mesi mi dicono uh, sembra, sembra di sentire un altro mondo, un'altra vita che non ci riguarda più, perché il, il testo racconta un modo di viaggiare che in questo momento non è... Yeah, friends non è of mine who read the play in this period are telling me that it seems to belong to a world that doesn't exist anymore because we can't travel anymore. Mm. Before we come now to the place, um, um, a, a question to all of you, open. Uh, how, what is, how is uh, Italian contemporary playwriting? What do you guys think? Uh, what, what moment is, is Italy in, in the, the Italian theater when it comes to playwriting? <laughs> Io. Uh, ho, se ho capito bene, Valeria, da, datemi una conferma che momento è per la scrittura italiana e per gli autori italiani. Sì. Questo. Uh, diciamo questo, sicuramente negli ultimi uh, 15 anni c'è stata una grandissima apertura che non è ancora sufficiente proprio a livello di sistema, però diciamo che tutte quelle realtà contemporanee che prima erano un pochino ghettizzate nei cosiddetti teatri off, ora sono sempre più valorizzate e portate anche nei circuiti più tradizionali. Yeah, unquestionably in the last 15 years there's been a significant opening up toward playwriting. It's still not enough, but uh, it was formerly this whole reality of uh, theater, writing for theater was very ghettoized and held in kind of an off-off type Uh, social context, but it's, it's increasingly opening up uh, and institutions are opening up to theater and to playwriting. Sicuramente abbiamo ancora un problema a livello istituzionale e un problema a livello di sistema proprio per um, appunto la progettazione e anche la valorizzazione della drammaturgia contemporanea italiana sia verso il paese stesso che verso l'estero, però devo dire che dei passi in avanti sono stati fatti. There's still a lack of institutional support and institutional uh, responsiveness uh, to these kinds of initiatives, but things are getting better. Thank you. Can I add something about the, the contemporary playwriting in Italy? What uh, I noted uh, Uh, as uh, Gabriele was saying, uh, it, there is a, a, an increasing, uh, uh, co consistent increasing uh, of uh, playwriting. And uh, uh, what we registered to this year, the 15 plays uh, uh, were almost uh, all good plays. Yeah. And uh, also the advisory board uh, uh, told us it was uh, so difficult to decide what kind of uh, vote to give uh, because there was so good place. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, if, uh, Frank, do you want to tell something about the, the criteria of uh, the selection? Well, let's come a bit, a bit later, maybe just to hear a bit also. Um, um, is that to, maybe to uh, Mimosa and Tatiana, Mariana? Is this a golden age uh, of playwriting? Is it getting better or is it towards ensemble work? Uh, uh, what's happening? Well, how do you see it in Italy at the moment? Io, io sento che c'è una profonda divisione fra eh, la drammaturgia che nasce per la scena fatta da attori che già recitano in un'abitudine e una invece che è totalmente accademica. Noi abbiamo questo problema che è come divisa in due, o qualcuno sa scrivere perché scrive e basta, oppure c'è un'abitudine alla scena e... Molto spesso, infatti, eh, i drammaturghi italiani hanno delle, già delle compagnie alle spalle e invece è più difficile trovare un drammaturgo puro, in qualche ah, modo. Ok, well, the, this is a very interesting observation about there's a deep division in Italy between uh, people who write with a theater, with a company at their back and who write uh, for actors and people who write in a really detached from the reality of an acting company. Is that, is that what you were yeah, saying, basically, yes, Mimosa? Yes. Yes, I, I, I know the, the Tatiana works. I, I don't read nothing, but I know that she is totally pure. <laughs> uh, for example, I know that Tatiana's work is totally pensa, pure. That is to say, she's not coming from a company. Mentre invece altri che hanno una compagnia anche meravigliosa, come anche Gabriele o... Da Marco, da Marco, insomma, sono stupendi. Loro invece sanno che come una, una pratica che è meravigliosa. Quindi sono due, due mondi. E... Sento, so sento that qui. is to say that Tatiana is a playwright in the, in the, you might say, the traditional English sense. In a way, she stands away from the theater and, and does her writing. Um, whereas uh, work like Gabriella, Gabriele, sorry, uh, has a has a very interesting uh, company behind him, so he's working much more in an active context of collaborating with actors. Yes, and my job is is I work in music also a lot. So I I work in music and uh, drammaturgia and metto insieme. Quindi il mio lavoro nasce sempre dalla pratica, ma da qualcosa di diverso. Cioè noi italiani abbiamo il teatro indipendente che è quello che ci fa agire e poi un teatro un po' più accademico che devono imparare a, a dialogare. So, uh, in my opinion, these, for example, uh, Mimosa is saying that she works a lot with music. And so she thinks of playwriting very much as connected to music as a, as a practice. Um, and that world uh, has to find more of a bridge to a more academic uh, approach to theater and composition. We've lost Gabriele a moment. He will be back. Uh, uh, okay. Mariano, any, um, or we can move on. Uh, oh, Tatiana, Mariano, is something you want to add? Sì. Um, io um, mi sono formata in una scuola um, in un'accademia teatrale, eh, mi sono formata come drammaturga eh, in una scuola in cui ci sono dei corsi eh, per attori di recitazione, di regia teatrale e di organizzazione e di danza, oltre che di, di drammaturgia. Uh, so I was formed in an academic context. I went to a school of the dramatic arts, uh, really an academy, and I studied to be a playwright. And in this same school, there was courses, a curriculum designed for actors, for directors, for dancers, and for playwrights. Penso che questa sia una situazione eh, con una sfumatura in più eh, rispetto al quadro che appunto ehm, ci dava Mimosa, nel senso che uh, gli autori dentro questi contesti, uh, dentro questo tipo di scuola, lavorano sì come degli autori puri, ma sempre a contatto con gli attori, sempre molto vicini alla scena, che è diversa da un'esperienza puramente accademica, diciamo. So uh, that, that school situation is, is kind of a mixture, really, of an academic setting with a practical setting, because as playwrights, we work together with actors uh, continuously and directors and designers. Yeah. E quindi 
ogni anno eh, si diplomano da questa accademia o da accademie simili molti giovani autori e penso che ci siano oggi in Italia molti giovani autori di talento, ma c'è una grossa difficoltà per questi giovani autori eh, ad accedere ai mezzi produttivi e a vedere i propri testi diventare teatro. Quindi so, me, eh, c'è questa, questa difficoltà. So, allora. thanks, thanks to my school and other similar schools, every year my school produces uh, a whole crop of very talented uh, young writers um, who go out into the world. The problem still is finding the means to produce their plays finding institutions, finding companies, finding a, structures that are able to put their plays actually on stage. Questo ovviamente è solo uno degli aspetti ed è vero che c'è tanta drammaturgia che nasce in contesti non legati alle scuole ma più sperimentali e che ha per me molto valore. And this is really just one aspect and we're not even mentioning the whole reality of, of Italian theater of ensemble companies that develop their own work. Uh, you know, similar to... Yeah, so Gabriele, not uh, uh, Mariano, um, uh, how do you, how, where do you fit in in the Italian theater system? Is it, a, is it open for playwrights? Is it, uh, is it an, uh, an, an inspiring field at the moment for you? Come titolo? No, sì, gradisco la traduzione. Ma co come ti trovi in questo contesto? Ti trovi un posto per te? Ti, ti senti incoraggiato? Allora, io diciamo che eh, faccio parte de, di quelle esperienze di composizione di drammaturgie comunque legate alla scena, il che non significa che io non faccia anche delle drammaturgie scritte, come dire, a tavolino. Però sì, il mio percorso è sempre stato legato eh, sin dall'inizio al palcoscenico. Ok, the, uh, uh... Mariano gave a very clear and helpful distinction. There's the composition for the stage and there's the composition a tavolino, which is to say written, the playwright writing at his little table. Okay, so Mariano is fortunate to belong to a company. He has a company at his back that he's in constant interaction with. I mean, it's just as a, as a note, it's interesting to hear this because this, um, it really goes back to the roots of Italian theater deriving from the Commedia dell'arte which was completely almost, the author was a less significant character for the most part. Um, and then going through Goldoni, who was a person who worked like Chekhov with actors and developed roles actually specifically for actors, for specific actors. Um, quite, quite beautiful uh, um, a mixture, you know, of a new technology uh, and the musician who also writes, like someone said, the great philosopher Rancière, if you have a traditional old, beautiful, to cultural heritage like theater and then something new comes up like virtual reality or film at the time, something new happens. We have coming something coming out of a school that also uh, uh, values acting and directing and there's a dialogue or a company, an ensemble where you write for the actors or um, 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 as Gabriele says, who is also you're involved very closely with it. I think that's why I think this is a, a, a so, so, so lively, so, um, uh, contemporary, and I think, yes, it has something to say. Thomas, um, as a question for you, um, all these plays were not, except one maybe, were not, of course not translated in English. We could not afford to translate all 15 of them, all the significant works. What the Italian advisory board said out of the last two years, these are the most significant works. So I want to let everybody know this is a, a big deal. And uh, Thomas, so you translated the first pages and the synopsis, What did you detect when you, when you saw the text, when you read them? And of course, you have to read them so closely. Is there, what, what surprised you? Well, uh, a few things. Um, one is, I, I, I mean, I just about translating in general. Um, it's a little bit like being an actor because you basically become a mouthpiece for the writer. Um, and also it's a little bit similar to acting in the sense that when you work on a play, you completely plunge yourself and immerse yourself into a world, into an imaginative world intensely to the degree that you forget yourself. And then you go on to, and then, you know, an actor does that for a certain period of time and then that play's done and they go on to the next thing and they plunge themselves into another reality. So that was a little bit uh, the way working on all this series of plays one right after the other felt. Um, 
um, some texts you feel a great deal of affinity with, and others you feel as though you're kind of in outer space and you can just hang on to the words and translate the words as best you can and, and hope it's, it's coming through. Um, one of the things that I'd say about these four plays that maybe has more to do with the reader than the writer is that you know, in different ways, they were COVID plays. They felt like they were somehow conditioned by, even though I think some of the plays were written before uh, this happened. And yet it's, it's because you know, the reader is constantly, or the, or the spectator is constantly seeing reality filtered through their own experience. And so in, in very different ways, I mean, from the use of virtual reality of being kind of detached from actual contact between people to Gabriele's play, which is about a, a kitchen underground in a slightly where there's this on, slightly in the future where there's this onslaught of sludge like seeping into the kitchen to the kind of um, Mariano's play is basically a long monologue of a person who's very much into uh, his own head. And then Tatiana's play is about um, a couple of people who like tourists who have this kind of superficial idea of we're gonna go out and we're gonna have a wild time in this city. And then they find they're themselves in the middle of something that's much more than they were really ready to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, so each of the plays, even though they were written in a specific moment, has something to say about uh, the moment we're living in now too. Yeah, I, I want our audience also to know when we ask uh, our 12 members, 12 also professionals, people who read plays for very different reasons, whether they are theater historians, actors, directors, producers, uh, playwrights, uh, so it's a whole mixture. We ask them, please look, what is the artistic value of the play? What is the theme of the play? Is it of interest? What is the, uh, the interest of the theme to New York audience? Something that might well work really great in London or in Turkey or Greece or Asia might not be the right homeopathic pill in, uh, in New York. And also then originality. Is that something you know, unique? Do you feel something? So all these uh, four, I think, significant uh, um, 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 points we came up with to when we ask our readers, to look at it of significance. So this is now, uh, these are the four plays that came out and we are really uh, uh, proud of it. And I think we're gonna go through them. We're gonna ask uh, maybe everyone uh, to get, tell us a little bit about the play from the, to be heard from the, from the author, from the writer. And the writer of course is someone, you know, who is in dialogue with a lot of plays that happened before and at the moment. And, and it's in Italy, it's influenced um, by so much, but again, these are writers, this is what they do, and like a painter paints, a sculpture makes sculpture. These are writers who create work for the stage, and it's some of the best out of two years in something that we relate to. So these are pearls uh, that build inside the oysters, or we could say how I like to say, like diamonds that come under pressure, like tectonic plates, press gas things together, and it gets concentrated, and diamonds are the hardest a structure, some of the hardest on planet Earth, even so when you put them under heat, they disappear. And if you want to make a great diamond, you have to cut it, you know, a good diamond, you find it, uh, your diamonds are brilliant because more light comes out than comes in. That's why they are shining, they reflect. But in order to have them shine, sometimes you lose two thirds of the weight. So you cut away a lot. So these, people who are with us, and of course, all the other ones who they were, they produce these kind of diamonds. They experience the pressure. And they also cut a lot to make it shine, to make it fun, to make tough choices and to come something else. And this is what they came up with. This is their stories where artists said, I want you to listen to audiences. This is of meaning, this is significant, and it might have a meaning also for your life. It has a meaning for me. And as we see the world through painting, through poetry, writing, we also see the world and art through performance and theater with the hope that we learn something from the experience the writers did, the journey. So we're gonna go now through those uh, uh, four plays and uh, maybe we start with Mimosa. Mimosa, tell us a little bit, what's your work about? Uh, tell us the story, how did you do it? Hey, uh, my story is about identity. 
e this identity um, l'ho esplorata sia nella, nella trama che appunto nel mezzo comunicativo che è il visore met è metà in, diciamo, in presenza, la performance è metà in visore 360 gradi. So, so um, my play it's about identity mm -hmm. and it's built into the plot, the theme is built into the plot and it takes place half in, in presence, that is to say flesh and blood acting between the actors on stage and half through a virtual reality device. E, diciamo che la, la, la matrice di ispirazione eh, Pirandello come, come sensazione, come tradizione italiana e che si unisce a quello che siamo abituati a vedere e a vivere ultimamente, cioè la serialità e il thriller. Um, my uh, matrix, my inspirational matrix is Pirandello. Uh, as coming from the Italian tradition and the way he played with uh, the you know, question of what is reality and qual era l'altro? Oh, and, and the present moment, that, that present those issues brought up to the present moment. Sì, uh, la, la serialità delle serie tv che siamo abituati a vedere e il genere, diciamo, thriller. And especially in terms of the contemporary genres of this serial TV, you know, these long television programs we see with lots of episodes, in the genre of the thriller. Yes, so uh, quindi è anche un gioco performativo fra gli attori, fra l'attore e il pubblico, e il pubblico è coinvolto, diciamo, in una sorta di giallo, di Hai una connessione in un contesto internazionale, globale. Ma uh, come, come drammaturgo o come lettore di drammaturgia? Both. Tutto. Ah, um, Direi come lettore di drammaturgia, eh, soprattutto con, eh, con i paesi anglosassoni, eh, anche, con la, anche con la Spagna, meno con la drammaturgia americana, a dire la verità. Per esempio, per I'm me. I'm more informed about English uh, playwriting and Spanish playwriting than I am about knowledgeable about American playwriting. Sicura, sicuramente anche con alcuni drammaturghi americani, ma eh, le, le mie maggiori fonti ispirazioni, i miei legami più intimi sono stati con, uh, con drammaturghi inglesi e irlandesi. So, uh, especially Irish and English playwrights for me. Secondo mm. me um, è vero che abbiamo una tradizione che è molto presente e a volte può essere anche ingombrante. E allo stesso tempo però sento che c'è anche una tendenza a, a produrre una drammaturgia che è in dialogo con la drammaturgia europea. Um, so it's true that we have a strong tradition in Italy that can also be uh, a weight on our shoulders, um, but we also have a definite strong tradition of interlinkings with other European nations. E questo penso anche grazie a dei progetti di drammaturgia che negli anni, e di traduzione soprattutto, che negli anni si sono occupati di mettere in relazione le produzioni uh, dei diversi paesi in Europa. There's been European policies of intertranslation between the nations and this has been very helpful for becoming aware of what's going on in other countries. Quindi penso che anche un progetto come questo possa nel tempo aprire dei canali forti anche attraverso l'oceano diciamo. No, hopefully this kind of interconnection will expand also on the other side of the ocean. Yeah. And uh, Mariano, do you follow uh, international or global playwriting? Passa? Non eh... Non, non, non sono, come dire, capace in questo momento di, di citare un testo degli autori, però anch'io approfitto quando eh, nei teatri accadono delle produzioni che portano i testi dagli altri paesi europei o anche da altri continenti e, e corro a guardarli con, con molto interesse. Eh, personalmente eh, trovo che la, come dire, la, il, la preziosità di un progetto come questo eh, sta proprio 
in, in un aspetto. Io trovo che, come all'inizio Gabriele diceva, che qualcosa inizia a muoversi rispetto all'ingresso della drammaturgia contemporanea nei teatri più istituzionali, diciamo così, e, e credo che questo sia vero e che debba in qualche modo crescere questa possibilità, credo che anche l'occasione per la drammaturgia contemporanea italiana di essere messa in Spencer, scena... One moment, uh, Mariano, one moment. Well, he's just saying I can't really think of, I can't cite a text in particular, but uh, I know um, when I can, I see all the productions from foreign countries and uh, that, that come through, and I, I go to them with great interest and enthusiasm. Um, what's precious about an initiative like this, is, this initiative of, of, you know, yours, Valeria and, and Frank's, is that um, it connects up with what Gabriele was saying about things are starting to happen. There's starting to be more institutional movement and responsiveness to these kinds of initiatives. Sì, e lo, lo stesso è per la le occasioni da creare per la drammaturgia italiana all'estero. Credo che eh, questo progetto o altri eh, dovranno far crescere questa possibilità. And a project like this really helps, you know, Italians reach out abroad across borders and expand into the world. Yeah, It's, it is incredible also to know that America, a very big country, a financially strong country, a billion dollar industry on Broadway, so very little travels outside. Uh, America doesn't have the Goethe Institutes, the Instituto Italiano, there are very little communications outside and I think um, they are very interesting contemporary writers, you know, they don't know about your work, you don't know about their work. Um, and, um, but musicians listen to world music, it's easier, you know, you can listen to music, I'm sure. Um, and Mimosa listens to musicians from Africa and Asia, America and Europe, it's easier, but um, in, in, it's not here. So Valeria, to come to slowly uh, to an end, uh, um, before I ask you guys what you are working on, Valeria, what is your hope uh, with the Playwrights Project? And uh, what, what do you want to achieve in the, in the uh, ideal version? Why, why do you put all this work, and I know you're in the evening and it's late and you have to do and back and forth and you have to fight for it and uh, next to other projects you work on, you know, why is that so important to you? This Italian play, why did you do it? The first goal of this project is uh, make readable many, uh, many plays, uh, as uh, many plays we can. So as uh, I can uh, read an English or American uh, play, I, I would like that uh, other people that doesn't understand Italian uh, can read uh, Italian plays. This is the first uh, simple uh, desire. Then after that, many other desires came off, uh, came on because, uh, you know, uh, we just, um, uh, just uh, made a movie uh, uh, on a play of uh, the Italian playwrights of the last edition, of, of the second edition, uh, uh, A Notebook for Winter uh, by Armando Pirozzi. And uh, we had uh, the possibility to experiment a new, a, a, a new vision of a theater in cinema. So the dialogue between cinema and, uh, and uh, theater and uh, it was uh, very, very interesting to do this experience. So yeah. it opened a new, a new kind of uh, desire. Uh, so I, I, I work in theater many years now. It's uh, like uh, 30, 34 years. And uh, so now I was very young, I was passionate uh, and I am still passionate and I am not- uh, not You're still even, very young. Not even <laughs> very yeah. young. Uh, but uh, when I was very young, I every, every time say, oh, I am doing this, this is a uh, theater, but I love uh, also something different for theater. And maybe in the future, I will have uh, the occasion to prove uh, that something different is possible. Yeah, it's incredible. The time of Corona where <laughs> scientists now have apps and 
that and create artwork artists are interested in science people make films they haven't done it before researchers in academia make performances of what they research is everything we hybrid forms also valeria brought italian writers will eno and others to italy so it's a two two way street and we all have to engage in a global dialogue the problems we are facing like racism homophobia um, the ecological crisis and economic crisis they are global crisis and we all have to see that you know that only can be understood and solved in a in a global context and i think theater has to be a model to uh, look at uh, if theater is interested interesting because it is a model it happens in theater it can also happen in life because for a moment um, it is real and i think this project is a great model to show that different thinking to uh, to work locally but to think globally to be inspired and understand each other better um, 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 in, is important and I think uh, it's an excellent excellent project. Thomas, for you as a, a last question, um, you uh, have all your life uh, read plays and uh, work, of course, often from established writers, uh, writers who are classical now, you know, who are uh, uh, in the pantheon. So, so how did the, the Italian playwrights for the plays of our, for where do they fit in? What do you think? Um, well, I, I, it's unique, you know. I, I, I don't have a uh, I don't have a solid answer for you. It's it's also stimulating. I mean, there's just every every play starts off with a like a big question mark, and it's like, what's this going to be? And so for me, you know, it was a very rapid experience of so working on this. But it's just like each one of these plays just opens up a new vision, and. Um, We'll, I mean, the, the, the goal, as, as Valeria said, would be because a play really, from my point of view, it doesn't really exist until it's taking place live with an audience. And everything else is basically just talk, you know? So um, that's what we want. That's what we would like this project to be, to, to get the plays staged and let it, let it get it out of the hands of, get it in the hands of the actors, get it in the minds of spectators. Will it have an audience in America? You think people will come? Well, it's hard because we talked about insular. American audiences are incredibly insular, really. There's much more, it's mu there's much more access to international theater in Rome than there is in most places in the United States, even in the major cities. Uh, everybody is so self-involved in the United States that, that um, but I, I don't see why not any good production, any, any good production is going to set off sparks. Yeah, I think so too. I think there will be an audience, people will be interested and I hope one day there will be money for a first festival of Italian plays or as Valeria says, that idea of filming on stage. So some kind of fusion form a new invention of, uh, as she said, the Kammerspieler like in chamber plays, camera mm. plays uh, or, or something. Um, uh, we, we can do it. So um, as a last question, and then we're going to go, oh, you go uh, to sleep. It's past midnight uh, in Italy. And I'm sure as a good writer, sleep is important. So much happens in our sleep. We dream and we write our plays, actually. In the day, we just catch up with what we dreamt. But um, what uh, what are you guys working on? And now maybe we go backwards. So poor Tatiana doesn't have to work. You as the first. So what are you guys working at the moment? What's your new play? And uh, and is there a, a novel you read or a piece of music you are listening to? Is there something inspiring? So what's inspiring and what are you working on right now? Am I the first? Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm writing a new play, uh, which will be staged by a group of young um, actors, of 10 young actors, and it's about desire. Huh. Okay. So, is, and do you read something? Did you listen to something, something inspiring that came across you for in this time of Corona? Something that made you wonder? Well, uh, yes, I'm reading. Um, yes, I'm reading and listening to a lot of stuff, but for sure something that is really inspiring, inspiring me now is Mark Fisher work. Um, Yes, his work and 
I'm listening to a lot of FX Twin. A lot of? FX Twin. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I walk a lot uh, listening to music through the city. That, that's, that's a great way. <laughs> Walking in cities and nature is a great idea too. To connect, um, yeah, um, Gabriele. What about you? What are you working on um, with your fiance at the moment? Uh, I think you said you're right, <laughs> and uh, and what's inspiring you at the moment? Um, in questo momento non sto, non sto lavorando a qualcosa di teatrale. Come dicevo prima, sto raccogliendo delle cose per il teatro, ma mi sto concentrando sulla sceneggiatura di un film. Um, ho in mente questa storia di questo Pullman, eh, questo road movie, eh, su 14 persone che prendono un Pullman dall'Italia, attraversano i Balcani, fino ad arrivare a Međugorje. È un racconto di un viaggio spirituale. Oh. Your sound, your sound, Thomas? I thought I was done. Um, I'm working on a screenplay about a bus trip that 14 people take across Italy to uh, Medu Gorge, which is a, a, a pilgrimage site, Same right? Thing. Yeah, like the, in the East, yeah, Eastern like Europe. Europe. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Gabriele, what, what is inspiring you? What are you reading, listening to? Uh, mi colpisce tantissimo lo scontro tra scienza e fede. La scienza chiama i miracoli con un nome specifico che si chiama shock carismatico. La scienza dice che quando noi viviamo qualcosa come miracolo, in realtà all'interno del nostro corpo si sono alleate una serie di forze biologiche che ci permettono di vivere qualcosa come fosse un miracolo. La fede invece lo vive come miracolo. Um, I'm very interested in the clash between science and faith. So scientific phenomena uh, as, and the concept of a miracle, um, changes in biological forces Uh, from a uh, point of view of faith, uh, can be are sometimes described as charismatic shock. That's the happening. That's a scientific terminology mm -hmm. for the happening of a miracle. Amazing, 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 and I think that's an interesting time to think about. Mariano, what about what are you working on next to the play, and you're going to go tomorrow? But is there something new on the horizon? Allora, in questo momento eh, sono in una sorta di fase di rigenerazione. Eh, scrivo in linea di massima un testo ogni due anni e dopo che il testo nuovo debutta, per alcuni mesi mi considero come una terra da cui il raccolto è stato tratto, a cui bisogna dare un tempo eh, per rigenerarsi, per poter creare una nuova cultura. Questa come right now I'm in a phase, right now I, I'd say I'm in a phase of regeneration. Usually I write one play in two two years and I write the play and then get it staged. And then afterwards I go into a, like from an agricultural point of view, a fallow period where all the resources can regenerate and refertilize. Ma la mente è su una domanda è fantastica su un personaggio. La domanda è eh, se e eh, in che termini è possibile, in che tempi e in che modo, eh, una drammaturgia che restituisca eh, l'esperienza in cui siamo tutti della pandemia. E so, il personaggio... Oh, sorry, sorry. È, il personaggio a cui penso in queste settimane è Cassandra. Ah, ok. So I'm meditating on um, uh, the ways and means that it would be possible to render the moment we're living through right now with of the pandemic. And I'm focusing on the character of Cassandra. Mm. Good. And what are you listening to? What are you reading? Or what's inspiring you? Eh, vorrei citare una serie tv, credo statunitense, che ho amato moltissimo e ho visto nelle ultime settimane, The Good Place. So I, I'm, very, I'm very inspired by this uh, American series that I've, I'm following these days called The Good Place. Great. Yeah, it's a good TV show. It really, it really is. So Mimosa, you started and now you have the final words. Ah! Uh, <laughs> Um, so what yeah. about you? What are, what are you working on? Uh, did you now went to a dome projections or uh, under? Un, what is the technology? Are you having new ideas? What are you working on? Yes, I'm working on the figure of the of women. 
sulla donna e sul conflitto tra quello che è veramente ehm, terreno, pornografico e quello che è il santo. E... Però, il canto? Il pornografico. Il canto. <laughs> okay. So the figure of woman and, and where tra la santa terreno... tra il conflitto fra la figura della donna santa e della figura come posso dire della prostituta della pornografia ah ok so the conflict between the, the holy woman and pornography sì e, um, diciamo che lo faccio nella musica molto cercando questo in um, generi completamente diversi quello sacro e il punk più totale quindi voglio cercare and, and di... I'm looking at, from a musical inspiration point of view I'm, conf, I'm, I'm putting sacred music together with punk That's interesting and you, it's also a virtual reality project not yet I'm just thinking mm, amazing so what do you what inspires you what are you listening to what are you reading or seeing yes i'm listening max richter max richter yes mm -hmm. yeah yes and and about tutta la musica con la chitarra elettrica uh, and the, the electric guitar <laughs> you play electric guitar yes yes good so we didn't see your cats they're not showing up for us right yeah <laughs> electric wait So here, here we go. So I think we are coming uh, closer to an end uh, once uh, Mimosa shows her cats, I guess. This will be the, uh, the goodbye image, really. Thank you all um, for listening. Our, this is important to have good theater, to have oh, great. Man. Oh, here, <laughs> wow, beautiful, a beautiful, a beautiful black cat. So it's important to have great theater and good theater, but we need a good audience. It is all about the audience, actually. That's why uh, all the writers and art theater artists here produce the work that has been seen and someone makes processes it and makes sense out of it creates meaning perhaps completely different meaning than um, that was thought but it is a contribution to understand the complex world we live in the world we live in is complex people try to tell us it's black and white it's good and evil all is simple it's not true and if you want to know how the world really is look at playwrights look at shakespeare look at the work um, of uh, Mimosa, of Mariana, Gabriele, Tatiana. This is a, how the world really is, how complex it is, how difficult it is. And we are catching a, a little piece of reality there, even if the reality is imagined and symbolic, but it is something that is true. And um, this is what artists do. They search for the truth as much as people in law or people in, uh, in the sciences. Uh, and, um, and so um, this is an important contribution to the history of mankind, to, uh, to the civil dialogue we have, and uh, to what I think is uh, the foundation of our societies. It is a sharing of, um, of, of the arts and experiencing of the arts, access um, um, to the arts, and they are making a great uh, invaluable uh, contribution because they are part of the civilized world, and you as an audience member are part of it uh, too. And if you have a great society, You have a great theater, you have great sports, you have exciting music, you have great painters, you know, so it's a reward for being a good uh, place and there is a good place, but we all have to work for it. And I guess in Italy perhaps, but also especially in America now, a lot of work needs, work needs to be done and the contribution writers do for, to bring us together, to look at something together in a collective uh, moment, to talk about it is, a, is invaluable because um, it goes to the very foundation of what mankind is about. Also artists talk to each other, come to solutions, present something on time. And um, so it's a model for a civic society where conflicts are shown in a symbolic way. And we hopefully understand the world a little bit better or have better questions. So I'm terribly sorry we don't have a seagull evening. Normally the playwrights fly over or some of them. Um, and I don't know what will next year. It doesn't look good in New York. We don't think the theaters will open till the fall, maybe not at all. Uh, in our university, we just heard the first ones that they will only do on online teaching also in the fall. People are afraid uh, of uh, COVID, of, uh, of getting infected, the teachers or the students, nobody wants to be sued. So uh, it's a terrible time still ahead of us. And um, so we all have to use it in a good way. 
and um, and one of it is to you know listen better what we did now we listen to our writers here from Italy they really do have something to say to share our lives our sufferings our joy and um, and I think this is um, what the Italian playwrights project uh, also now contributes even so we never thought it would be in that context on zoom and uh, in times of COVID every day in America more people die of COVID than have they were killed in the World Trade Center or bombing 9-11 is over 3,000 it's a devastating year at the moment and uh, everybody is out of work in theater musicians there's no place to go no place to perform theater people often work in bars and restaurants they all close musicians performed in bars and in restaurants and great great musicians it's all closed the, the biggest concerts in New York City you see is someone that's playing on the street yeah, for, and a for, for Hammer's market or for a restaurant, but even now it's too cold for that. So it's a complicated time. It's part of history we are, and you are part of this because of that happens to be in this time. Thanks again to Valeria uh, also for really putting this together. She is the, uh, uh, the guiding angel uh, behind this. It's her ideas, her projects, her work that makes this happen. We help her or try to help her, but it's only here because of um, her energy, her ideas, her dedication. And to make that and thanks for Tom and so many others uh, who helped us to make this and Patricia who's on the advisory board Marco and, and and so many many others so thank you again and I have to close it down now Valeria thank you for being there for us and one you. Last we, have a, we have two years uh, to a part of two years so translations Maybe COVID uh, will uh, will go away, we so we, we will uh, talk about also readings uh, and the connection uh, between the authors and the translators. So, so this is just the start. the start. Thank you all to be here. Thank you all for your passion to be here and uh, to listen. Uh, we me speak uh, in uh, it English. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and in you. case anyone is, Tom, we ask just five minutes, Tom. We give him uh, for all the, the time. Yes, thank you for Tom. That was brilliant. It's important to translate as directors translate from page on stage, and actors translate. You know, yeah, the, and uh, and the, then uh, uh, if you are curious, uh, if you are curiosities uh, to listen, uh, uh, no, to listen to read uh, some. Uh, Italian plays in English. Uh, we have uh, three books online. You can uh, you can uh, check. Uh, right. Italian Americans Playwrights Project. Just Google it. You will find it. And again, thank you all very much. And uh, have a good night uh, in uh, in Italy. Uh, yes. Hope, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All sleep soon, as we all know. You shouldn't look at screens an hour or two before you go to sleep. So. You poor Italian writers, this is thus we did damage to your health, but it was worth it. Like a good party when you have a headache the next yeah, day. It's very late. It's it very was worth it. So thank you all. We really, really, really are thank you. Thanks to HowlRound again for hosting us, for Andy to make this also happen. The great Thea and BJ for being so generous to say this is important. Let's have a national broadcast about this. So thank you all. And to our listeners again, really, really thank you for taking the time. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.